Yeah, good morning, Mr. Steele. Good morning, Mr. Judson. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Let's put this camera on something where we can talk together. Hey, Mike. Mike. We need you. In shorts and I'm socks. Not ready for this, Let's man. get with, let's get with that. <laughs> Dude, guy. your socks aren't even matching. I know, see? Yeah, just, just <laughs> Trevor and I. I have scissors. Yeah, scissors, what's up? I'm Judson, that's Trevor, my, my dude. I lost my voice last night, so I'm gonna sound a little bit raspy, but today we're gonna be unboxing a brand new MacFly 140 prop with the carbon spars, which I hear is like one of the best flying paramotors to ever use. I haven't even heard this, I've flown this in the past and it's like... So we're just gonna take you along with us for the journey of unboxing a brand new MacFly. We're gonna see what comes in the box. We're gonna do a walk around and show you all of its features and what you get in the box with the brand new MacFly when you buy one from France and then go fly it. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay. I wanna knock you out, man. <laughs> knock you out. What's going on with those shoes? Hey, hey man, hey dude, your calves are looking good, man. You've been working. Is there even a paramotor in this box, dude? Is it light? No. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new MacFly Ravel Cage 150 with the carbon spars, acro arms, 18 liter tank, and no throttle. Oh, is this a French box? Dude, look at this French box. I can just smell what the bread. Smell? Okay, so what's in the box right now? Like, what, what do we see, first of all? First thing we see is something covering the harness so you don't accidentally cut into the product. A, a good manufacturer shipping a paramotor-related product will stick something right there so that if you come at it with a knife aggressively, that you don't cut it right across the top there. Look at that. Oh, what's that? Little carbon fiber. Oh, it's long. That's Ooh. a 140, huh? That 140 prop. Custom prop cover. Don't put it in the dirt. Do we have a tarp or something? <laughs> <laughs> Voila! Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. MacFly okay. custom prop cover. MacFly. Dude, look, it even has a buckle for whatever reason. I but there's a buckle. I think it's so you can put it on your car and then it won't spin. Ooh, look at that black powder coat on that bad boy, dude. We spent extra money and waited extra time for that. That actually looks super nice. Did they change the color of the netting? I don't think so. When you order a MacFly, there's like a bunch of customizations. I got to choose the hoop color. I can choose silver or powder coated black. And then I can choose the line color. There's like yellow, red, blue, green. That's and green, like everyone a bunch has the more. yellow. Everybody has yellow, I went for green. I like it better. Doesn't it look good? Yeah, it does, I like that. Let's see what's in here. I bet those are the carbon spars. Dude, they are. Oh my oh. god. Oh yeah. Oh my god, those look, look at those, dude. Are they, are they light? I don't even feel them in my hand. So the, this MacFly, fully assembled, should only weigh 54. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a Maverick is also 54 dry. Correct, correct. Industry average is 56.6. Whoa. That's what you get at backcountry, is industry average specifications. I think we're ready to lift the actual paramotor. I did go for the acro arms. Oh, uh, So you cannot for regular arm. arms or acro arms. Dude, there's no way we're flying this today. This is a, this, this is like some assembly, this is like Look Ikea. at this. Yeah, we've got to call Mike back over here. Ooh, we got a little bag, dude. Let's see what we got in our little bag. By the way, there should be a shirt in here for you. Oh my God. I know. Really? Is that the shirt? Is that a medium? I think so, yeah. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa, thanks, bro. Look at that. Shirt yeah. for the old Justin Graham. Gotta, I'm gonna look like Alex Mateos. Whoa. Reserve pouch. Okay. Manual, belt tensioner, and a little bag. I think we got a tool bag that comes with it. Okay. There it is. She's out, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Man, this is gonna stay approximately this clean for now. There's one swing arm, there's the other. Acro arms have this nice little... Uh, I hear they're good for connecting selfie sticks too. A beautiful harness. I think this is a sole harness. I went for their new, new, new harness. There's like five different harness options and this is the newest harness option that they have in the large size, I believe. Nice little offsets for this primer bulb here. Little Polini primer bulb. Love that there's actually markers for this fuel tank. So I went with the 17 or 18 liter fuel tank over the smaller 12 and even 10. I believe there's three different tank options. So I've never seen a new MacFly in person. My buddy Josh McGee got one in person. Come here, come here, come here. 
I like that MacFly is kind of taking the incentive to customize their things with this little oh, sticker. Dude. And this, I believe Pap, Pap also does that. MY22287, so if you don't know, this is a Moster 185 engine. One of the, it's probably like the, the most widely used popular engine in paramotoring. Makes 25-ish horsepower. And with a 140 centimeter prop that we're gonna have on this, it's gonna make about, I don't know, 160, 170 pounds of thrust. Maybe 140 here in Utah. This is, I would it's say, a sweet machine. just a sweet all around machine that's well well proven the moster um so we went with just the pole start not a dual start they honestly if you have the technique down are very very easy to start we should make a whole video moster starting secrets revealed they also customize the tank which is nice and they have like a dual x on that thing so no matter how hard you start cranking and or banking this thing is not leaving your side what about always spanking? Have fuel spank test approved the welds are all really nice. The material used for this MagFly is titanium. That's titanium. Now, some benefits with the titanium that are really cool. If you have an aluminum paramotor and you, for some reason, decide to butt land or bump it into something and bend it, you can only really bend it back once. It's well, still weak as soon as you bend it back. And then it's weak. Titanium is very malleable and you can bend it back many times and it will retain its strength and it's actually easy to work with. And then the other benefit is obviously you get to say it's titanium. What else? Let's look. So new Viterazzi, pull starter, impact font. The, this thing, I don't know what you call this, but it reminds me of the door stops that you used to flick as a kid. <laughs> I think it actually looks really nice. It adds a nice touch and pulls the pull starter away from the frame a little bit. Makes so it easier to find. It. Yeah, and then you have this leash. I mean, really, you'll never get lost trying to find the pull starter. And then McFly gives you this really cute little shackle to connect the starter to. Dude, that is such a cute frame. little shackle. It's adorable. Let's look at the harness real quick. I'll take, let's take a tour. Tour de harness, plush padding in the shoulders, like really thick. Speed bar stower. So when you don't want to fly with your speed bar connected, you just put the end right here. Lots of adjustability in this thing. Lots of adjustability. I can see it already. Pretty sweet that this is embroidered like this with the MacFly logo. Okay, this is different. So your leg straps and waist straps are all but one. You clip in like across. Interesting. Underneath the seat. Ooh, are those two little bags right there? What is this? I think that holds up your harness. Oh. Huh. That's that's a good frunk right there. It's actually a dunk because it's the under. <laughs> you got a side pocket right here. I mean, I don't know, you could fold like a small American flag into that space. Side pockets like every other paramotor. I think Scout wins the side pocket game in the paramotor world. You yes. could put an Nalgene bottle in there. <laughs> the cool thing with these is they unzip and then you can put the reserve on the side. So we'll be doing that. Seaport extension, speed bar, holster, stretchy neoprene, low friction rings. I, I assume speed bar. And then it's gonna come through here, through here, to your wing race mode and then when you want to go chill mode you stow it right here forward thinking from the french well shall we assemble her uh, yeah i think we should assemble her all right we've got our top piece this titanium fit and finish is muy bueno i feel like sometimes they have to break in you know they get a little rattled yeah, up by yeah. the engine let me take this slide that there oh look at that dude they actually go. made the hoop an airfoil shape. That's you know, nice. circles are very non-aerodynamic shapes. Even in the 40s, they knew that. Like on a Cessna 120, the spars are still aerofoil shaped. My man hey, likes my stickers. Man. My guys, they know how to sell for me. Put a sticker on it. I'll take two. Yep. This is the last hoop section, dude. Oh man, wow, the comfort too. Holy Toledo. What the? I've made a mistake, everybody. So that comes, get that nice and tight. That goes right there. And then you tighten that down. Look at that. That's much better. Then these. Th 
That looks actually pretty good. Is it done? She's done, dude. We got her together. We broke a Velcro in the process. A little disappointed in that. That was probably my fault. Not gonna blame MacFly for that one. Netting system was more complicated than I expected it to be. But if you knew how but to do it. it now would. that I know how to do it, it's not gonna be difficult. However, I will tell you, just being honest, I would not want to take this thing apart and put it together. Every time you fly. I would hate that. It didn't suck to put together, but it wasn't super fast and fun. Those swing arms to spec? Those swing arms need to be tightened. I think if you flew that right now, it'd probably not go super well. Channel your best newscaster and ask them what they think of the new Mac line that we just got. Hi, this is Mike with Backcountry PPG. And right now I am interviewing Ty. Ty, Ty, what do you think about this unit? Hold the microphone up. I think it's clean. Very clean. Very clean. There's literally no dust on it yet. And Orville, what do you think about this? I think it's awesome looking, but I, I, I don't know how to judge per I'm not, I'm not there yet. And what do you think there, Chief? I, th I really like that carbon on there. I think it's pretty dope, dude. I like the green netting. Yeah. I want to jump in that sucker and take it for a fly. All right. Well, that wraps up our conclusion with these fellas on this unit. Great work from Mike on the interviews. Great work. I lost my voice. It's very not heavy with nothing on it. Oh, yeah. It feels like an atom. Okay, this is the first jump test of the paramotor. This is how high can I jump with the paramotor on. It was about that high. I think we got a good thumbnail on that. Alrighty, I think that uh, wraps up the unboxing first impressions of the Maxfly. Yeah. And now we're going to uh, finish building her, we're fire good. ups, and break her in, and then first flights tomorrow morning. Yeah. Does that sound good? That sounds good. All right. That's good. Hey, I'm about to go fly the Mac fly for the first time. This was supposed to be the first impressions section of this video, as the title implied, but this is now my third time going out with the Mac fly trying to film a first impressions for you. The first time, my GoPro on my vlog helmet that's been working fantastic for the past two years I didn't record my microphone audio. The second time, it didn't work. And then we went to Hanksville. So full disclosure, this is definitely not now my first time flying the MacFly. This is going to be more of a first review of the MacFly and then in the future we'll do like a three or six month review. But I'm gonna take you along with me on a quick little flight around the airport on the MacFly with the Carbon Spars Travel Cage 140 prop on my Freeride 14 and tell you what I like about it and maybe some of the things I don't like about it. This is currently my fourth time trying to record a first impressions of the MacFly Mobile right here. I've been flying this for the past week now since we got it, and I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. So we're gonna prime it, we'll squirt, clip it into the MacFly. So here's a new thing that it's got going on. Let's hit this waist leg strap situation in one, which I'm not a huge fan of because it makes it kind of hard to get in the seat. Got my Freeride 214. Clear prop! Free Ride 2 Competition Edition. Speed. The glider. That's what the cool kids fly out here. Let's get that. Let's get that. Okay, and we're off on the Mac Fly. We're all the way out there. And we're in the skies on the lovely new Backcountry PPG Mac Fly. This is exciting. This is the first video I'm actually making with Backcountry. So, Mac Fly. I've been flying this for the past about week now. And I've been very much enjoying it. I'll tell you a few things about it and a few things I don't like about it. Coming from the Scout, which traditionally people have said, oh, it has some of the best tour compensation on the market. This thing is so dialed. The biggest, like the most impressive feature to me that, that sets it apart is the torque compensation. This is a 140 centimeter booster, so it makes quite a bit of thrust. And I can go full throttle, hands off the brakes, and we're going straight. Completely straight. 
That is something that I have felt no other paramotor do, and I think is really, really different in a good way. Like, that is so, so nice. Other things is, just in general for me, having a more, like, a metal hoop that's a little bit thinner, a little bit more durable, I'm enjoying a lot. The weight shift of this paramotor, great. Two weight shift turns. Yeah, so that's all weight shift. Works really good. I think we're gonna dive down in this field, chase that stream. So the Magfly is is a French paramotor, designed in France, and it's what's flowed by Alex Mateos. It's actually Alex Mateos's, I think, family's company. And if you don't know who he is, he's the undefeated world slalom champion of champions he has so many titles under his belt it's not even funny and this is what he flies in the slalom competitions which are high powered fast little wing races around pylons and this thing is tuned in that environment so it has to be super balanced and smooth and alex has definitely done a very fantastic job of creating a paramotor that is very balanced feeling. Besides the torque compensation, there's something about the geometry, wherever they put the clip-in point and the thrust line, where when you add throttle, it doesn't really buck. It's very planted when you make turns on throttle. Or even if you get light over the top of the wing over, it, it just stays straight, which I really love. Check this out. So I'm, I'm gonna fly straight and level here hands are off the brakes and on any other paramotor like yeah you can weight shift into a hard right turn yeah so any paramotor will keep the right wing tip down in a turn on throttle pretty much any other paramotor will not do this to the left this is absurd to have that level of Equilibrium on power, insane. The harness on this thing is also really nice. It's very well padded, lots of adjustments. One thing I don't like though is this leg strap, waist strap in one. It's convenient to clip in and out of the paramotor with, yes, but it makes getting in and out of the seat a little bit harder than I'd like it to be. It's kind of, I have to do the wiggle, which I don't love. But once you're in it, it's very comfortable. I'm a pretty skinny dude, and I don't feel like I'm swimming around in it. This is the large, extra large. There's a little bit of room, like that, but it's not like, whoa, which I enjoy. I feel very snug and secure in this thing. I really like the carbon spars and the net on this, but I will say the carbon spars and the hoop of this are not very strong. There's definitely stronger hoops on paramotors, but this does have a really cool aesthetic to it. Whenever I try a new paramotor, one of the like first things I do is is you just you get in it and fly it, right? And you just see does this feel intuitive is there something that I need to think about or compensate for or some weird quirk I have to get over when transitioning to this thing and the honest answer with the MacFly is I got in it and flew it and it felt I felt at home immediately which is something that I think not a lot of paramotors do super well the uh, Parajet for example does this extremely well it's rather hard to mess that one up you just get in it, and you fly it, and as long as you have all the settings within the ballpark, it's great. And this is very, very similar. I've never really done a, a paramotor review on this channel. I've just always flown my Scout, which I love. Actually, I don't have it anymore, but I loved it. But now I'm kind of trying some new stuff and going, wow, I also really, really love this. I think this is going to be my 
kind of go-to paramotor from now on. I don't know how many of you guys ride motorcycles, but you know when you get on a KTM for the first time and you just have this feeling, oh, this is just so much luxury and smoothness and all the geometry is just perfect. That's what this motor feels like to me. It's just like this little step above everything else of like extra dialed in. The geometry is just a little bit better. The torque compensation is just as it should be. It just makes, it's no problems. For torque compensation, this MacFly uses these aerodynamic fins back here. Carbon fiber. The more throttle you have in, the more effective they are because they work on air being pulled through them and twist the motor the other way. This motor also has geometric torque compensation, which is these uh, swing arms are bent in a way that kind of makes it so you're always weight shifting to the left to compensate for the torque of the motor that's trying to pull you right all the time. The combination of those just, I mean, ridiculous. I will say off throttle or low throttle settings, with this amount of torque compensation, with both the geometry in here and the fins, it does go left a little bit. You can actually just turn one of the fins straight and that completely gets rid of it. Oh, I also love this right here. The hoop is so far back that you can just leave your brakes unstowed. I wouldn't recommend doing this necessarily, but you could just leave them unstowed and even at full throttle. And you just feel like you have so much space. This motor has so much thrust. I would say the 140 prop on this feels very similar to a factory R with a 130 prop. We have an e, e props on it, so it came with it. It's a lighter weight prop. It's a little bit less durable than the Helix, but the response is really good, really, really fast. And the cool thing with the 140 is it's just super duper efficient compared to a 130 or a 125. The larger, the bigger your prop is, the more efficient you become. You're practically burning less fuel than if you had a smaller hoop. I'm gonna go hang out with the students, see what the students are up to. We're in the middle of an advanced class at Backcountry PPG right now. I snuck away to film this review just so I could get it to you, viewer. Give me a thumbs up. I want to just, on the side, do a series of photos from a drone or from the ground of all of these communities in Utah because it's almost like like a horror movie. It's just everyone, it, I mean, everyone's just on this perfect dirt lot with the same exact house and their perfect sod grass when you get the grass guy to come and everyone's in a perfect row with their perfect picket fence and it's just this exact setup over just all they're doing in Salt Lake. This is another one that's going in. It's not really that I have a problem with it. There's just like this weird dystopian vibe to it. Just looking, it's just, yes, everyone's got their perfect white picket fence and perfect green grass and perfect white garage doors. Everyone's got a white garage door. Can't have a black garage door in Utah. I just think it would be a really interesting photo series. Currently with the 140 prop and my trimmer is in the middle, I'm cruising at 5300 RPM, which is rather low for a 14 liter wing. And that's pretty much all to do with this propeller. When you have that bigger propeller, it makes more thrust, the engine can turn slower, you get more thrust to the top end, and everything's happening. They all look like nice houses though. I would be so fortunate to have a house like that. All right, so, so concluding thoughts on the MagFly before we do swingovers. I really just enjoy everything besides getting in and out of the seat, but I think that's an adjustable thing about it. About this, it feels so refined in how it flies, the weight shift, the torque compensation, the build quality. It's all titanium. I think it looks dashing, and I get to be almost as cool as Alex Mateos. 
If you're in the market for a new paramotor, I can hook you up. You can visit backcountryppg.com or call us at this number right here anytime and we'll pick up and we will get you set up with either a MacFly or whatever paramotor you're in the market for right now. One of my favorite things about Backcountry PPG is we sell every single brand, every single manufacturer and we can get you whatever you want. So I don't. I can just tell you honestly what I prefer. Right now I'm just absolutely on the MaxFly vibe train. But whatever you want, we can get you hooked up with in a speedy time, best response times in the game. In the, we got expert people on the line. Either myself or Trevor will pick up the phone, get you dialed in on whatever you want. Whether you're looking for a wing, trying to get some advanced training, you're trying to get some beginner training, you want to become a pilot, that would be rad. Or you just want to buy a brand new MacFly because I just flew it and was like, yeah, this is kind of the wave. Thank you for watching my videos, I appreciate you. Right there, subscribes, support my childhood dreams of being a YouTuber. As long as I get the wind direction right, it should be totally okay on this landing. Oh yeah, mega swoops, mega swoops. Whoa, look at this light, such good light. So I wanna conclude my thoughts on the Mac Life for you. I've been flying it for the past, how long have we had it? Five hours and two weeks. Is my hat on straight? And I've been really enjoying it. I cannot say enough good things about the torque compensation. It is seriously different, it is a step above the rest. The build quality, fit and finish, every time we pull out of the trailer, everyone's looking at it and just going, wow, this looks really nice. Launching and landing is super easy. My only complaint with that would be getting in and out of the seat with that clip situation. I just need to spend more time figuring out how to get that adjusted properly. But overall, I, I'm, I'm in love. I really like it. I'm gonna continue to fly this as, I guess, my main motor for now. And if you'd like to get a Mac fly, if you're feeling inspired, then you can visit backcountryppg.com or call Trevor directly. His number is right here. And we will get you hooked up with either a Mac fly or whatever paramotor you'd like because we sell every single paramotor at Backcountry PPG. If you're watching this video and you're like, I, I wanna do that, we can teach you. You can learn from me or you can learn from my good buddy Trevor behind the camera. We offer beginner training and advanced training. If you're already a pilot, there's something for everyone here. So it's really exciting to be able to offer that to my viewers. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Until the next one, fly smart, make informed decisions, fly great. Have a great weekend. I'll see you later. You can pan up. <laughs>